of Split has so many distinct stories to discover. It's time to meet Lea and find out more about Jewish heritage and community in this area. Okay, so we are in the part of the town uh, also known as the Jewish Quarter. Uh, this is actually the area uh, that uh, covers a couple of streets where the Jews had to live uh, during the Venetian uh, authority in Split. Though at one point uh, these streets were enclosed with doors when it actually became a ghetto. And please tell me who is Daniel Rodriguez? Uh, Daniel Rodriguez uh, is one of the most famous Jews uh, that has ever lived in Split. He lived in Split uh, just for a little while, but uh, by coming here and uh, building a port and uh, bringing so much prosperity and commerce to Split, uh, Rodriguez actually uh, changed the history of this town forever and uh, brought so much wealth and opportunity to the local merchants as well as the Jewish merchants that lived here. These holes uh, were usually made at the entrances to Jewish houses because that's where the Jews would put mezuzahs. Uh, mezuzah is uh, actually a symbol of a Jewish house. It's um, a little object uh, in which you uh, place a piece of parchment um, where a prayer is written. Mm -hmm. And every Jew actually kisses uh, their hand and then kisses a mezuzah before entering a home, for example. So, here we are at the synagogue. Uh, how old is it? Uh, this synagogue is from the beginning of the 16th century. It was built by the local Jews. Uh, it was built during the Venetian period. Well, it was built inside of an already existing house. And it was just this room. And uh, later on, when the Jewish community got bigger, it got expanded to another house. The Jews who lived in Split were uh, the people uh, that lived from the beginning of the founding of the city and later on they were joined by the Sephardic Jews that escaped from Spain and Portugal during the Inquisition. At the beginning of the 18th century uh, there was a wave of Ashkenazi Jews coming uh, towards Split and they basically did the first big renovation. Uh, they introduced the style of the time. So basically the look you see today is not from the beginning of the 16th century, but from the beginning of the 18th century when they made the first big restoration. Is this synagogue still in use today? Yes, a lot of the old synagogues throughout Europe are not in use. They have actually turned into museums. But we are proud of the fact that this synagogue is still in use, that there is still an active community, uh, small though, there are only 100 of us. And how does community live? today? Well, as a small community it's not easy, uh, but we try to keep the people together. Uh, we always have uh, interesting activities uh, for our members. We also get together uh, every Friday evening for Shabbat dinner and we also celebrate all holidays. Also, we are visited every day, so we always try to have somebody at this position to tell them a little bit about our history. So uh, these are the local Jews who lost their lives uh, during the Holocaust. Th these families lived uh, in Split for generations, but in 1943 uh, the Germans occupied Split and unfortunately rounded up all of these people who never came back from the war. Uh, they were sent to Auschwitz, actually. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you for all of this information. And please, uh, could you write me something so I could save it as a souvenir? Of course. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Leah. You're welcome. Here you are. I got to know some different and less known sides of the city of Split. Now I will meet Luisa, who is the best person to explain us what Split mentality is. Nice to meet nice you. Nice to meet you. Oh, yeah. Glad to see you. Yeah. yeah. Glad to see you too. So I will show you here some interesting things. The local people drink a lot of coffee. So uh, we can't drink a coffee so in five minutes. No. So here we drink coffee maybe it's one hour. One hour. One hour, yes. <laughs> and uh, people like to, um, to talk meet each other here on the, our promenade. This place here is really special, so we call it Wojny Turk. Square. Fruit market. Fruit yeah. square. Fruit, mar fruit square. <laughs> and uh, so here there were 
okay, we can call it just market before. Today, just a place like this, like a that square, a longer time square, ago, long time there ago. Was a so market. our market it's a little bit far away from here. The but you know, one. here there were a lot of women who sell the products and everything. And you know, here there are a lot of windows, so uh, many women uh, were here on the on they the window, from there. yeah, they're looking from there and they're arguing, yelling and everything. So it was really interesting. So the people here like to gossip, like uh, uh, to, to, to talk a lot. So uh, they uh, just want to, to know. Uh, they need to mind their own business. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah that's right. Yes, yeah. yes, that, yes. That would be the right way. Yes. <laughs> Oh, I'm caught by Fiaca. Can we see? Fiaca is an Italian term. It's really related to hot, hotness. So, especially in the south of Italy. Sweetness so of doing sweetness, nothing. Yeah, sweetness of do, dolce Day far dreaming. niente. So our culture is really related here. So the Mediterranean state of mind. So between the modern world, between the rush, between everything, so you, you, you need to find some balance and just sit and do nothing. and nice and I think I got caught by Fiaka. I'm completely immersed in this town mentality, split mentality. I experienced all of these stories in so short time and I'm full of impressions. I, it's certainly a different side of split town.